Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in salvation for your people, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Today's readings can be found in the gather, gather book at number 904, 904. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me of my guilt, and of my sins cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sinned, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if, by the transgressions of the one, Death came to reign through that one. How much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, all these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, get away, Satan. It is written, the Lord your God shall you worship and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. The gospel of the Lord.
There's the story of a person who visited a monastery and asked the abbot or the priest or padre in charge, what do the monks do in there all day? And the abbot responded, we fall down, we get up, and we fall down again. Symbolizing repentance, forgiveness, repentance again, admitting we're wrong, and acts, acts of contrition or apologies. Recently, I read an article about the qualities of a good apology. I bring this up because we pray today the biblical classic act of contrition or I am sorry to God statement in Psalm 51, the responsorial psalm. It is the admission of guilt, the taking of responsibility by King David of Israel. What was David so sorry about? David the king, the number one head honcho in Jerusalem, was famous not only for his reign, but also for his repentance. And in Psalm 51, David was stating his I am sorry statement for the affair with Bathsheba, his sinful scandal, and complex cover-up. In an article about what makes a good apology, the author notes some things not to do which have crossed my mind when admitting I am wrong. Some things not to say. First, obviously. Don't say the word obviously. For example, obviously I know how hurt you must be. How could I know that? Or, obviously I am sorry. If these things were so obvious, the apology would not be necessary. Obviously, in the case of King David, well, he was taking care, advantage of his position and his power. That was obvious. It was not obvious until he got caught whether he was sorry. I didn't mean to. That's another thing we say when we're apologizing. I didn't mean to. Do not say this, because when we hurt someone, we really have to recognize the impact or the effect of what we have done rather than what we intended. God will judge our intentions in our hearts. After all, David didn't mean to cause a scandal. He tried to cover it up. Psalm 51 is a good apology or act of contrition because it shows David's trust in God. This is his act of contrition. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense, thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin, cleanse me. Being washed or purified is what both baptism and the sacrament of penance and confession do. David continues, a clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. David has fallen, but he wants to get back up again. As his penance, David does not resign as king, but promises to lead sinners back to God by proclaiming divine justice. Instead of a merely external sacrifice, David offers the sacrifice or tribute of a contrite and humble heart. Does the value, the stock value or property value of David's kingdom increase as a result? That's what CEOs want when they give an apology. They want their stock to go up. Yes, David is the leader who promises to do better. David's actions are beneficial to others. And yes, when you and I are sincere in our contrition and apologies, we are benefiting others. I have learned, sometimes painfully, that in making an apology, it's important to recognize that it's not all about me. Then again, my, and my apology alone, and David's apology alone, is not what changes the world. Rather, it is Jesus' sacrifice, as Paul summarized in our second reading, for just as through the disobedience of the one, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many were will be made righteous. Knowing that Christ has done this is a reason to be glad, to smile, even if we are sad, looking down after a moment of sinfulness.
in the Bible, there's an, there's, an, there's an ancestry DNA chart in the Bible, although it's not an ancestry DNA chart, it's a genealogy, and this genealogy leads from King David to Jesus himself. Jesus comes from the house of David, and Jesus as king is the one who really leads us back to God by his humility. And Jesus in the gospel faces the challenge of the temptations in the desert. It may seem antiquated or obsolete to talk about the devil or Satan as the source of temptation, because there's so many other sources of temptation, right? The internet or, you know, other people. But we refer here to the devil not as the way to create a scary presence or scary image. In fact, what the evil spirit really wants to do is to make us think that they do not exist. That's the devil's goal, to make you think that he does not exist. Or in the case of Adam and Eve, the devil wants to convince Adam and Eve that God's plan is not really that beneficial to them. So they better take things into their own hands. There are three temptations which Jesus face and Adam and Eve face, which also apply to you and me. They are summarized in the first letter of John 2.16, saying the three temptations are lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. We don't walk around talking about that very much. Those are not, those words don't roll off your tongue. Like, I'm, I'm troubled by lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. But they are important for us to recognize because each one of them is not really of the world. When Jesus is asked to turn stones into bread, or Adam and Eve are tempted to eat the apple, they are tempted by lust of the flesh. And we're sometimes tempted to take things that are good, even healthy, food, or other objectives in our lives, and to make them an obsession or even an addiction. In this regard, the devil makes you think that he doesn't exist because the fault is all yours or all mine for being so weak. Yes, we are weak, we are fragile, but we also, during our Lenten practice, we are practicing fasting or giving things up to strengthen our free will, to recognize that even simple, that by even simple fasting, giving up something like watching the news for a little while, or giving up sweets, or giving up caffeine, or eating less sweets, or drinking less caffeine, shows that there's a power greater than evil in the world. So even these simple fasts or sacrifices help us to grow closer to Jesus. That's lust of the flesh. Then there's another temptation. Jesus is tempted to do a spectacular leap from the top of the temple. He's tempted by lust of the eyes. And one of the things that we might be tempted by is to be look good in the eyes of others. We want others to like us, we want to be popular, we want to be stronger, and the devil tempts Jesus with this temptation, that if Jesus does something spectacular, people will really follow him. They will really trust him. And I can also be tempted by this, especially because I may have a desire to please others, to, to make things good for others, or to be popular in others' eyes. One of the reasons we give alms or give charity during Lent is not necessarily to be popular. Now, people who give away lots of money are popular. Okay, that's good news. But is that why we give alms or give charity? One of the things we can do during Lent or do any time, really, is to give alms or to give charity to someone who cannot repay you or cannot repay us. Imagine being nice to the kid in your class who's the least popular, who nobody likes, okay? That kid will not repay you, okay? That, that kid might not even appreciate you or being nice to the neighbor that nobody else likes. It is tempting to the eyes only to be nice to those who are going to repay us. Jesus says, however, love your enemy, pray for those who persecute you. So we are called to give charity to contradict this lust of the eyes, this desire to look good in the eyes of others. 
The last temptation is called pride of life and is expressed in the devil's offer to give Jesus all the kingdoms of the world if Jesus will only swear an oath to him, only promise allegiance to him. And we come to church to pray to recognize that our allegiance, our true loyalty is to God, not to anybody else. In the desert, we observe that Jesus is tempted, and we are tempted, and we are tempted really in our feelings, not in our faith. Peter Kreef, the Boston College philosophy professor, makes an important distinction that feelings or emotions are influenced by external things like fashions or fads, by the wind or by the weather, and the devil can influence our feelings, but he has no control over our faith. And isn't this true of other people, that other people can affect how we feel, but they don't really change what we truly know and believe? In a book I read about Catholic religious life in the monastery, the author observes that the temptations, the three temptations, are tests of faith or tests of confidence in God. Faith is tested not simply by choosing what is absolutely good over what is absolutely evil. That's true. We, are true. we, are, we want to reject what is absolutely evil. But faith is also tested when we choose God in his greatness over things that are merely materially good or even just materially comfortable. For example, staying angry can be a stimulant like chocolate. And sometimes our anger is justified. It may come from a place that's good. And chocolate is not entirely bad. But in these and other cases, God is asking us to give what is partially good, like give up what is partially good, like our own material comfort, for what is completely good, serving him. Jesus fasted in the desert so that he could give up his life. He is asking us to do the same in little ways by our Lenten disciplines. Our profession of faith, the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us make our request known to God so that peace may be in our hearts. that our parish centered on Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament may be a community of faith, charity, and solidarity towards those in need, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intercession of Our Lady of Lords, for healing and strength for all those who suffer in illness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the train derailment in Ohio, for safety of their water, food, homes, and all the rescue workers, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
for our recently deceased. We pray. Lord, Lord, Lord. And for the intentions of this Mass, the people of our parish, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your grace. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. So the word in my soul shall be you.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, to strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Just another reminder, we are doing our Tricky Tray fundraiser, and we welcome your gifts, any gifts you would like to make, including gifts of new and unused items, perhaps even gifts that you received, that you would like to re-gift to us. It'll be our secret. I won't tell anybody that you gave it to us. Um, and uh, it helps us out greatly. Uh, if you have any questions, please call the rectory um, anytime. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended.